Hello there, my name is Yusmas, and uh, this is the continuation of uh, part three. Oh, part, yeah, part, part three, I think, of our tutorial on uh, how to make this candle effect uh, melting down. So we have already made this uh, wax melting. So we just need to make this. Uh, um, how is it called? Uh, the wick uh, melt as well or burn down as well. So that is very easy because we have uh, we have this already made. Uh, so what we can do is uh, just duplicate it. So I'll just shift D to duplicate it. Uh, but uh, it has this keyframe, so I don't want that. So I will delete those keyframes. And uh, now we have it like this, but uh, it's not animated anymore. Uh, so what we can do is just parent this to this object, Control P, and now they can move together. And uh, they, it also has that, I don't know, uh, kind of displacement uh, animation. Uh, it's not necessary because this is only a single kind of uh, week. I'm not sure if I'm calling that right, but uh, uh, that's okay. So I'll just delete the modifier. We don't need it, and uh, I don't even need the subdivision modifier for for this part. So yeah. Now to make it work, uh, let me hide uh, these two and uh, just move. Let me also hide the frame, uh, so uh, cut and uh, move this here. Again, we we just add the boolean modifier like we did. I select this as the boolean object, and uh, if we hide this, you can see we get the same effect. So if I can hide this, uh, maybe select the wig and uh, it's boolean. I'm not sure if this is. Okay, so this is not this boolean. This is this boolean because it doesn't have any animation. So I'll select this and then the wick. Uh, move them to the side just to show you what's going on. So if we hide uh, this boolean, you can see what's going on. But uh, if we brought this back, put them just a bit close, closely, you see that uh, if we have this inside here, uh, it will never show because uh, they are melting at the same speed. Uh, so what I did, what I would do is uh, I would offset this movement a little bit, uh, like here, P put it about here. And uh, because it's parented to this object and uh, they're moving at the same time, if I hide this, you can see now this comes in a bit late because uh, the offset of this boolean object is uh, the movement of this boolean object is offset and uh, from this so it's a few distance from this and uh, so that makes it a uh, melt a little bit uh, slower or yeah take a, yeah slower so I don't want to see these meshes in my render so I'll go to the display settings and uh, t change the display as to to from texture to wireframe uh, so do the same with this. Now you can see how this is working. Now I can move these two back into position. And I can see how everything is working as we need it to work. So I can also just move these into uh, their own uh, 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 collection so M hit M to do that create a new collection I'll call these booleans hit OK and now okay, we have only one object let me make sure that uh, yeah so yeah we do have so if I want to hide this I just do that now what we are left with is uh, this flame and uh, how to make it follow this uh, kind of wick and follow its path. So for that, uh, I'm just going to duplicate this with a shift D. So we have that. And uh, then I don't need uh, these modifiers, uh, but uh, what I need is to convert this object, this mesh into a curve uh, so that this mesh follows that curve. So object, convert curve uh, the problem is that uh, this is polygon 
poly this is a polygon mesh and a polygon curve and uh, it will be so jagged in the movement so but uh, just to show you uh, how this would work is let me first do that uh, so that you can see the movement that would happen so i'll just add a curve modifier uh, select this as the curve because we have converted it to a curve uh, and that's the reason why i converted it to a curve because uh, this mesh would not be would not be able to call, to uh, follow it if it was a mesh and I would not be able to access this so I just need to change uh, the, find the correct axis for this so if we move this in the x-axis you can see how it's following uh, the the path of the curve uh, but I need to change uh, the cursor selection to cursor and so that you can see how this is following that uh, but uh, this is too kind of too jagged so i can just go to select the curve go to edit mode hit right click and then change the spline type to from polygon to uh busy uh it's still sharp uh, so we need to just hit v and uh, change uh this to automatic handles and uh i think uh, there's a lot of carving going on here but uh maybe that's okay let me see if i move this It's a bit too much, uh, but uh, just to show you how it's working, I will leave it like that, and uh, then I can bring it back to position, and then add keyframes uh, for the animation. So I'll select the keyframe, uh, the uh, the frame, and uh, flame, mm. and then move to the end around here. Move this along the Z axis up to there. You can see, but uh, so I think it should start moving out around here. So I can bring these keyframes in. So we have something like that. We want this to be a little bit above uh, the the curve. I think the, the is the way it's flowing around the curve is too much. So I'll just go in and uh, remove some of the points here. So I can remove this control X and uh, this and uh, this. So it will follow. It will just so that it follows. Are uh, the same length or the same curve as our wig. So you can just move uh, the polygons ar around uh, the curves around the control. And uh, let's see. It's also leaving uh, the wig. Uh, behind so you would need to play around with the timing a bit so this I need to start this off around here maybe speed this up a bit Yeah, then at around here is slowing down so maybe I can just put another keyframe here and uh, slow it down a bit so you just need to play around with the timing until you get it right so I think that would be good enough maybe For the melting and the flame yeah i think that's good enough but uh the frame is too still it doesn't have life in it and i can you know that uh, whenever the uh, a candle is burning it, the flame is always kind of moving around so uh, for that i'll just add another uh how is it called displacement modifier uh, again i don't do i think we already have a texture here i'll just reduce uh the strength a bit And uh, since 
we already have a, an object, an empty, uh, that we are animating of this year. That is animated. We can use that to kind of. If you want, you can just use a different uh, empty and a different uh, texture and animate them separately. Uh, but I wanted, I want to keep this as a very first tutorial. And I uh, see what we are having here. If I unhide this, uh, where is this group? You can see that uh, because our boolean is kind of getting finished here, uh, we are getting that issue there. So I'll just extend it a bit. Let me hide this again. Yeah, so we don't run out, run into uh, that effect. Yeah, so if you want to animate the frame a bit more, you can give it a different uh, displacement modifier with a different empty and a different kind of animation. So in the next part, we'll be looking at the materials and uh, the lighting. So uh, if you want the project, again, you can download it from my Blender one on one, uh, Blender one on one .com, our website. And uh, if you want to be a Patreon and support me that way, you can uh, also be like that. And uh, the reason you would want to support me there, not just to continue no, not just uh, so that I can continue uh, making tutorials. Uh, you will also be getting uh, different uh, assets that I'll be modeling almost every day. As you know, that uh, I model uh, tutorials uh, to sell on CG Trader, but I also put them up on my on my Patreon page uh, for anyone to download and use them at their will. So, yeah, you'll be getting things like that for free. Uh, a lot of a lot of. Uh, assets for free for free um maybe uh, I don't know. yeah so leave a like subscribe and i'll see you in the next video